This video is sponsored by my supporters. Sign up on Patreon, Ko-fi, or YouTube to get more exclusive videos like this every month. A few weeks ago, I was watching some YouTube and came across a video by Level Cap Gaming. In this video, he made this statement. And what I think I'm getting at is that there's sort of a tipping point with Star Citizen where the allure of the universe, the attractiveness of this massive open simulate everything style game is competing with the amount of bugs and performance and functionality. And I'm saying that tipping point for me is getting pretty darn close. I know. I thought this was a great lens to look at Star Citizen through. The development is so unique that it's hard to know how to approach it. I want to take this concept of tipping points and look at what features have in the past encouraged players to jump into this alpha, and what's coming up that might convince you. And if you enjoy, maybe consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any more news about this game. And thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. This project is one with a lot of struggles and setbacks. There's no denying that, as it's true with many, many large-scale projects. With employees in four different countries building two different games, with one being far outside the scope of most games, things are difficult. And that's not a slight. It's a reality that the company itself and the backers have faced time and time again. The fact that there was no beginning studio for this to even start from kind of adds to that point. And over the last nine years of development, while it's been slow, there's been some decent progress. This, however, isn't enough for most, which is entirely reasonable. But for many, what has been made at this point has provided enough content to justify the $45 and putting up with the alpha state of the game. And while said game can provide these people with dozens if not hundreds hours of enjoyment, there are always updates coming to the game bringing more content every three months since January of 2018. And each update brings a grab bag of different features to the game. Sometimes it's location, sometimes AI improvements, sometimes professions, and sometimes it's just a major bug fix. But no matter what, there are always small and large features being added to the game. And every update every three months, Somebody else is passing that tipping point. See, that putting up with the alpha state that I talked about earlier should not be taken lightly. While you can go hours without a bug that ruins your play session, you can also run into one as soon as you respawn. And that can go for game mechanics as well. Seriously, they can mess you up. Playing a game that's still undergoing development at the engine level can require a certain amount of overlooking and shrugging off some of those major issues that make it less enjoyable. Everybody has a different tipping point that can change over time when it comes to choices like this. For some people, it was the most basic addition of the limited persistent universe more than seven years ago. For others, it was the planetary tech added in 2018. And for quite a few people, actually, it was the addition of persistence, allowing for items and status to be saved throughout all of the quarterly updates, which came in 2020. Over the last couple of years, there haven't really been many huge moments like these. But the increase in quality of life, as well as general stability improving, combined with some not so huge but significant additions to the game, has led to an explosion of new players over the last couple of years. And I would like to show you some of these mini milestones that the game has hit to bring more players into the black. And in the meantime, maybe we could talk a little bit about some upcoming features that I think will draw in even more players, including maybe our friend Level Cap Gaming. Back in the summer of 2020, tensions were high with what seemed to be more delays than usual. While CIG stated the pandemic was not much of a problem for them due to their already decentralized nature in the studios, it does seem like a good amount of estimates needed to be pushed back. But that's kind of normal, so who knows. Regardless, in Update 3.10, we received a plethora of combat fixes including new targeting methodology and UI, a HUD rework, limits to high-speed combat, and turret improvements. While these additions weren't headline features, they improved the combat experience for casual pilots by leaps and bounds. Joined by the ability to trade money with other players, I think these combat changes in 3.10 led to more players seeing an exciting space combat game that they wouldn't mind giving a try. And ever since then, 
the combat experience has only continued to improve. In the Alpha 3.12 branch in January of 2021, CIG introduced dynamic events in the form of actual missions. While we had previously been treated to conventions and space parades, this was the first time a server-wide community mission had ever been launched for players to cooperate to complete a goal together. It was also the first time players were able to truly experience capital ship combat, large-scale PvPvE dogfights, and a fully narrated and voice-acted mission sequence led by Agent Rowena Dooley. Played by Anna Demetrio, a member of the Star Citizen community and my most recent podcast guest. You can see my interview with her in the video description to hear more about what it's like to be in Star Citizen and work with CIG. This was only the first event of many as well. We already have seen two new events added to the game since then, and we know of plans to keep these kinds of events always running in different star systems around the game. The back-end economy simulation, known as Quantum, will guide the triggering of these events, while allowing for some that may occur once a year, once a week, or even for multiple weeks straight. The system is still in development, but has recently reached a big milestone with the upcoming 3.17 launch that I'll talk about in my review next month. In Alpha 3.13, about one year prior to this video being published, the reputation system was added to the game also. This created a means of progressing in the game and earning large sums of credits no matter what your profession was, as long as you were good at it. After the reputation system was added, players could take on box deliveries, investigations, mercenary jobs, and bounty hunting, and rank their way up with companies to make way more money per job. While it existed in the game in some way prior, this was the first time players were actually made aware of it. Since then, the reputation system has improved with new occupations, companies, and reward tiers. In the future, many new professions will be added to the system, and it will ultimately become the best way for you to customize your character and progress through the game. This reputation will affect the jobs you get, the amount you get paid, what ships and weapons you can buy, what space stations you can land at, and much more. The addition in 3.13 was only the beginning, but building a system that finally allowed for players to have some form of progression in the game did a lot to bring that MMO feel to a lot of players who were sitting on the fence. If you'd like to learn more about how absolutely important this system is, I made an introductory video which you can check out down below, as well as an explainer which goes into more depth about how this system interacts with the loot and quantum economy system to create the overarching Star Citizen experience. Both of those are available to you down in the video description. In the summer of 2021, one year after that initial combat improvement pass, we saw the true beginning of Star Citizen ship combat tuning. This solidified the fun factor in ship combat in Star Citizen. While there are still plenty of bugs and issues that plague combat, the fundamentals were laid down here for both players and AI to be able to have much more engaging and exciting battles. Combined with dynamic events, atmospheric bounties, a new power management system, HUD UI updates, and better ship AI, this made the game a proper showcase for space combat that drew in many more players in the last six months. The best part of this was that it was expected. In the beginning of 2021, a bunch of developers sat down and attended a combat summit to discuss the possible changes going forward to meet their goals in combat. By mid-year, in this 3.14 update, we received that first combat pass. And at the end of the year, the same space combat team gave us an update overviewing the changes that were made, how they reflected the ultimate goal, and what we can expect going forward. Aside from vastly improving the combat experience and bringing in some new players, this just acted as a great showcase of CIG at their best when it comes to keeping the community updated. Wish it happened more like that. Finally, in Alpha 3.15, just two updates ago, players finally received their first robust inventory system. And the system, with its bugs and glitches, was a huge improvement to the feel of the game. While it has made tracking items and maintaining your belongings much more difficult, it's such a basic feature that some players wouldn't even touch the game without some form of inventory management. And the inclusion of backpacks meant players could play as mules for their friends, and easily transport things between space stations and ships. 
but this feature would not have been nearly as impactful if the update did not also include loot. Suddenly, players no longer needed to buy items, but could find them in boxes on NPCs or carried by other players. This added another layer of reward to exploration and other general missions and expanded on players' reasons to venture that much further. And it doesn't stop there. In the new Alpha 3.17 update, item rarity is now being factored into the loot as well. And you'll only be able to find certain loot items at certain locations, building a bit more on the believability of the whole thing. Now this wasn't an exhaustive list, there are many reasons for players to join this game, and some other big moments I didn't include here. There are also many reasons not to join the game. Many small features have improved the game in small ways that lead to many more players joining, like new mission types, improved visuals and places to explore, more dynamic events were created, important stability improvements and optimizations were made, and other games in the same genre kinda had bad moments. So while this list does not include all of the reasons for players to begin playing, it certainly can explain quite a few. But for the majority of players who will play this game, I don't believe we're even close to that tipping point yet. Regardless, there are more coming. So let's take a look at some of the features we might see this year that could have you spring in for the next free fly week in May. To add even more positives to the inventory and loot development that is still going on, items will now be sellable at stores in-game. One of those features that you think of as a given, but players have been hoarding and chucking items for six years now in the alpha. And finally, we can sell what we find. Lacking such a basic feature undoubtedly added to some of the hesitancy that players feel about joining in. Many players have felt they can't make enough money during exploration and FPS combat missions, this will make professions like those and other activities more viable for the casual player. The cargo refactor is a big topic, far too big for this section. It's ultimately the initial rollout of the final cargo system in ships. This will allow players to take any items they can get their hands on and add it to a ship's manifest. This is not the most impressive sounding thing, but it means cargo hauling will be a seamless experience of buying materials, manually loading them into your ship, and transporting them yourself. Each box will need to be placed by AI or players, and any item that can be found can be added to your collection during your journey. This means players can manually collect and trade cargo from different areas, attack ships and blow them up to pick and choose which parts of the cargo they want to take home, or sneak on board another ship and just steal the cargo. This physicalization of the cargo system will completely turn the game on its head later this year and the result could entice many new players to finally take that plunge. One of the most common requests in Star Citizen is game stability and optimization. Believe it or not, the game is always being optimized. The amount of bugs killed in this project is a bit disgusting. The problem is that the engine is still receiving so much work and underlying code changes that fixed bugs break again or create other bugs, and more often than not, it's almost impossible to find the bug due to the speed of development. There are a few key advancements that are expected to make a major difference though, and they very well could be the next major tipping point for many. The Gen 12 renderer is the rendering engine of Star Citizen that's currently in production. The advancements meant to come with this new renderer as well as Vulkan API support could improve frame rates and the rendering performance of the game to the point that it feels relatively smooth for a large portion of the community. Given the current and past performance, as well as the game still being in alpha, I think many players would find this to be enough to start playing the game a bit more. For seven years, the Star Citizen universe has been limited to a single star system. And while the possible addition of a new system has been rumored for years now, the actual development of said star system is impossible to deny at this point. It shows up in almost every weekly update, every monthly report, and most roadmap roundups. The team is working hard to create a new fully functional, fully featured star system that will land in-game all at once. This would more than double the play area, the missions, the moons, the planets, the factions, and the progression opportunities. And it would be the first time that we really separate the player base. As a much more lawless system, the professions, risk earning potential, and facilities available will all differ, leading to some players preferring either system. 
This huge expansion will also introduce static server meshing, which may increase the player count per server, and build on the stability improvements seen by the Gen 12 renderer. The amount of bugs and new features that are being roadblocked by server meshing is sometimes quite surprising. And if this massive expansion of the game doesn't bring the new players in, then having those roadblocks removed from those features, that might do it. Speaking of those features, many of them are seeing first iterations worked on this year. The last major profession added to this game was mining, in 2018. But it was all quiet on the career path front, aside from the roadmap, up until this year. In Alpha 317, we are seeing the introduction of the refueling mechanic, which will begin building that career path for industrial players. In addition to this, there is a good chance we will see salvage and repair begin their journey as well. In the meantime, engineering and hacking are also in development according to the monthly reports. If there is one thing that players have been begging for besides stability in this game, it's game loops. And it seems CIG has been listening. Currently, according to the progress tracker and monthly report, they are working on eight different career paths. The amount of new gameplay opportunities these could create by this time next year will be an opportunity for many new players to jump in as well, and may be the beginning of a more mainstream Star Citizen experience. It, of course, all depends on the development speed of the game and the priorities at CIG. Of all these additions, I can't tell you what is most important. But as we said in the beginning, the tipping point is different for everyone. Maybe it's a combination of these additions, maybe it's none of these additions, and maybe it's some down the line feature that was made possible by these additions. Either way, Star Citizen is reaching a point at which it is more approachable to more players, so expect to see a lot of new faces very soon. And before we go crazy in the comments, I'd just like to say everything I've talked about here could be delayed. Well, except for refueling, we're already testing that. But most of these features could be delayed and might not even come this year. So as always, players should take a step back, watch from a distance, and jump in when they know they're ready. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and want more like it, I make videos like these every month exclusively for community members who want to support my work. And make sure you subscribe to this channel to see all the major updates coming to Star Citizen as well as future space games and get notified for when the next free fly event allows you to play the game for free for a week. And hopefully I'll be able to get in touch with Level Cap Gaming here to get him on the podcast so that we can talk about what would do it for him. If you'd like to know when that would happen, my second YouTube channel hosts my podcast every week. Make sure to subscribe over there for that. And I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.